Okay, here's the graph we did in class. Okay, I just drew this graph by hand. Didn't do anything special. Just hoped that it would come out reasonably exponential. <coughs> Again, the graph everybody had in their paper is perfectly exponential. Well, perfectly, you know, to the pixel. Um, it, it, it's a good exponential. Um, and we did the same thing, just what I did over here. Uh, found the y equals 1 point, which is the y-axis, because 2 to the 0 is 1, so the point zero, 1 has to lie on the graph. So we know this point, <coughs> which tells us the unit of our y-axis. So we mark the y-axis off in those units. Then we check to find out where x equals 1. We didn't know x was 1 here. It just is before. We said, okay, 2 to the 1 is 2, so when x is 1, y has to be 2. Where on the graph is y equal to 2? Well, here. And now we come down here, and there's where x has to equal 1. And then if x equals 2, y has to be 4. Where on the graph is y equal to 4? Here. That's where x equals 2. Okay, and 2 to the third is 8. Where on the graph is y equal to 8? Well, here at this point and that projects down here. And these points came out pretty pretty even. Um, so I had pretty uniform units here. <coughs> and then I just kind of marked off units for negative 1 and negative 2. <coughs> um, next exercise was to do the same thing for 3 to the x. Well, that's fairly easy to do. Uh, you just do the same thing you do for 2 to the x, but now you're doing 3 to the x. Now, well, that didn't re really say anything. We know when x equals 0, 3 to the x is 1, because any number to the 0 is 1. So we know the point 0, 1 lies on this graph, so that is 0, 1. So that gives us our y scale. To get the x scale, though, we have to use the values of 3 to the x. So if x equals 1, 3 to the x is 3 to the 1, or 3. So we come up to 3, and we find the y equals 3 point of the graph, and that's where x has to be 1. And then when x is 2, y is going to be 3 to the second, which is going to be 9, and we find the y equals 9 point of the graph, and directly below that is where x equals 2. Now, these two curves weren't quite identical, but we see that the... Um, scale of the x-axis is spread out a little bit more for the 3 to the x than it is for the 2 to the x. Okay, that's worth understanding. Uh, we went on and <coughs> we did the same thing for 2.7 to the x. Now at the, that time you didn't understand why we did 2.7. If you were in class you know now. So I gave you the fact that 2.7 2 squared is 7.3. Pretty sure that's 7.29. Okay, that's the sixth power of 3. Um, 729 is 6 power of 3, and 22.27 is the third power of 3. When you square the third power of 3, you get the sixth power of 3, and you put the decimals where they belong, and you get this. <coughs> and that's going to be in the test. No, not really. Okay. So we do the same thing here. We know the point zero 1 is on the graph because 2.7 to the 0 is a number to the 0. It's 1. And then we can mark off equal intervals of 1 right on up the axis. Then, to find out where x equals 1, we know that, well, if x is 1, then y has to be 2.7 to the 1, which is 2.7. So we find 2.7, it's between 2 and 3, somewhat closer to 3. We project over and down to find where x equals 1. <coughs> and then, uh, and I told you what 2.7 squared is, so if you want to find the x equals 2 point, you square 2.7, you get 7.3, roughly. So you look at 7.3, you project over and down, that's where x equals 2. Same process. But it changes, you know, the numbers that you uh, locate from your y-axis are going to change with your base. So you want to kind of be comfortable with that idea. Okay, well, 
The next question is, okay, let's find 2 to the 3 halves, let's find 3 to the 3 halves, and let's find 2.7 to the 3 halves. Now, you know that, you know, that we, we don't bring our calculators out in class unless we have specific instructions to do so. We don't do anything by calculator until it comes time to do things by a calculator. So, nothing, we're done here, nothing we've done here requires a calculator. Uh, you could even square 2.7 without a calculator, but I didn't want you to have to do that, so I told you. Okay. How do we find 2 to the 3 halves? Well, we've got a graph of 2 to the x right here. We scaled it. <coughs> so all we have to do is find 3 halves on the x-axis and find out what the y-coordinate is. <coughs> okay, well, you can convert 3 halves to decimal. It's 1.5. Or you can understand fractions and understand that if this is one, then one half is half of this. Another half gets you here, and another half gets you here. You should understand it both ways, but either is okay for right now. So I put 1.5 here. I used the decimal form. I really kind of like the fractional form. And I kind of put it a little too close to one. It should have been a little over this way, so I'm not going to get a great estimate. <coughs> <coughs> But when x is 1.5, what is the value of y? What's the point of the graph when x equals 1.5? Well, we come over to the y-axis from this point, and we find it looks like it's pretty darn close to 2.5, doesn't it? Now, I know better. I know it's a little higher than that. And I also know that I actually didn't quite put this in the middle. It should have been a little further to the right, which would have made this point a little bit higher. And it might have been 2.6, 2.7, maybe even 2.8. <coughs> Remember, this is a hand-drawn graph, and what you're working on is a computer-made graph, but you're doing things by hand. You're doing these projections and everything by hand. There are going to be uncertainties and little errors. You try to minimize them, try to do it accurately, <coughs> but you don't go to extremes to do that because that would take too long. Um, so within reasonable time, you try to do the most accurate job you can. Okay, well. That tells us that 2 to the 1.5 power might be somewhere close to 2. Other people got numbers a little over 3. So, you know, I'm saying, okay, probably between 2.5, I think that's low. 3 might be a little high, but maybe not. So you can plug it into your calculator and see what it ought to be. After you've made the estimate. You don't make the estimate by punching it into your calculator and saying, yeah, that's it. Okay? So, To find 3 to the 3 halves, we just find where x equals 3, because we have y equals 3 to the x, where x equals 3, uh, not 3, 3 halves, where x equals 3 halves, uh, the y coordinate should be 3 to the 3 halves. It should be a reasonable approximation. So I think I got myself halfway. That actually looks pretty good. I projected over, and I got something like 4.8. Now, I know darn well it's either 5.1 or 5.2. Uh, so, again, I underestimated, okay, as well as I did with doing these graphs and everything. Well, remember, this is a hand-drawn exponential graph. Uh, you can't expect much more than that. Uh, so, you see that I'm off a little bit. You should be able to do this a little better than I did because you have a well-constructed graph, okay, a more or less perfectly constructed graph. Okay, 2.7 to the 3 halves. Well, here's 3 halves. We come up here, we see that gives us about 4. Okay, is that reasonable? Well, it's reasonable, but man, I do a calculation in my head. I know the square root of 2.7 is about uh, over 1.6, and 1.6 times 2.7 is more than 4. <coughs> so it looks like my estimate came out low again. I don't know why they're all coming out low. Something to do with the way I drew the curve. Uh, but in any case, um, you make your own estimates before you go to the calculator and see what the accurate values are. Good reinforcement and a good exercise in understanding these graphs.